on Nightline. Crash landing. A Boeing 737 goes down in a thunderstorm with 131 people. And incredibly, all but one have survived. A woman on board tells her story exclusively to us. And good enough to eat? On the first day of shrimp season since the BP oil spill, the boats go out. But is seafood from the Gulf really safe to eat? The government says yes, but in an ABC exclusive, we take samples to an independent lab for tests. Plus, the planet's fastest animal. It's an extraordinary journey into the wild for a rare and intimate look at cheetahs and the woman trying to save them from extinction. From the global resources of ABC News, with Terry Moran, Cynthia McFadden, and Bill Weir in New York City, this is Nightline, August 16th, 2010. It was the first day of shrimp season today, and for the first time since BP oil began seeping into Louisiana waters, the shrimp boats headed back to work. Early reports suggest a bountiful catch, but is seafood from the Gulf safe to eat? The government says that, yes, it is, but we've taken samples bound for market to an independent lab for testing. What do they find? The exclusive results may surprise you. Yeah, that's the white shrimp and that's the brown shrimp. Shrimp season began today, the culmination of months of hope and anxiety for shrimpers. When they normally blue like this all the way to the end. Man. Some oceanographers believe over 100 million gallons of oil remain submerged just beneath the surface. Oil that shrimper Patrick Hugh dredged up for us just a few days ago. It took just a few turns of his skiff, silt, and then bits of oil bobbed up. So Patrick, we just stirred up some of this water and all this oil came up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of oil on the bottom out here that people don't see, you know, out of sight, out of mind. A NOAA report earlier this month stated it wasn't just out of sight, it was gone. That 75% of the oil had been cleaned up by man or Mother Nature. That was the primary reason Louisiana announced it would open the shrimping season early to the dismay of shrimpers like A.C. Cooper. The vice president of the State Shrimper Association, he brandished this bottle of oil at a town hall meeting here in Buris. I was working yesterday, and I accidentally found oil. And I'm going to tell you, it's not offshore. It's in our bays. This is it. The FDA says all Gulf seafood tested as safe to eat, but locals fear the government is wrong. We went out with Patrick Hugh again to investigate, this time with the purpose of testing fish and shrimp that would be in the market starting today. The sample would be shipped to a state-of-the-art lab at Texas Tech. This is what we're going to catch, white shrimp. Just a few miles from shore, Hugh cast his first net. Oh, that's a good thing. We trawled for a few minutes and scooped up our haul. A nice shrimp. Yeah, it's cute. Hugh and his nephew looked closer. And you've never seen anything like not, this guy. Nothing like, nothing like that. Look. This looks like an aged shrimp compared to what And look, at, look how this one, he looked like he got something on it, but not like that. Yeah, it's, it's uh, not right. Would you eat this shrimp? I'm skeptical. Would you eat I this mean, shrimp? I mean, this is the stuff that you guys have lived off of for generations. I don't know, man. Uh, probably not. Not right now, until I really hear the truth out of somebody's mouth saying it's safe or not. Then the bait fish and oysters. We wrapped the samples, jotted down the GPS coordinates, and put them in a cooler. Back on land, we sealed the coolers, overnighted the samples to Texas Tech. There, a team of 15 scientists received them and tested every edible part of the fish for the presence of oil and dispersant. Five days later, the answer. From this one sampling period, with a couple of sample locations from Bastion Bay, Louisiana, we were not able to detect the evidence of petroleum, hydrocarbon, and edible tissue from seafood, shrimp, oysters, and several fish samples. Kendo notes further study is still needed because if trace amounts were later found, if consumed frequently enough over a period of years, seafood with even traces of hydrocarbons could potentially cause cancer. I think this is some good news, at least today, but it doesn't describe necessarily what may occur in the next month. 
the dispersants, take the most toxic and hazardous components of the oil and make it immediately bioavailable to marine life. Stuart Smith, a lawyer representing the fishing industry and environmental group suing BP, sees something far more ominous in those samples and in the water. Clearly, PAHs are known human carcinogens. They will enter the food chain. There's simply no doubt about it. This weekend, just a few miles from where we caught those shrimp, we saw crabs scurrying in a river of oil. And then there are these images, turtles oiled, birds basted beyond recognition. Images that have frightened off some patrons these past couple of months at Chef Susan Spicer's Bayona. But this week, she'll put the first catch of white shrimp back on her menu. Um, it's one of our signature items, which is a, uh, a grilled shrimp with a black bean cake and a fresh coriander sauce. Good news for shrimpers like Patrick Hugh. Shrimp prices have plummeted the past couple of months. Some wholesalers are even demanding shrimpers agree to defer payment until their shrimp are proven not to be contaminated. But at least he's back on the water. We just want to cleaned up. We no. want to be back, put back to work 100%, not 50%, not 60%. Let's get it clean. He yearns for a certainty that may never come. The reputation of the Gulf's most prized treasures may remain tarnished for years. For Nightline, I'm Matt Gutman in Buras, Louisiana. Mm, remains a complicated matter. We'll continue to follow the story.